Hey everybody, and welcome to a beginner's guide to sculpting in ZBrush. In this video, we are going to look at three main kind of subsets or tools within ZBrush to actually begin sculpting. I would say if you're an absolute beginner and you've never opened up the ZBrush software before and you are looking around at the UI and it's a little confusing and mind boggling, I would recommend checking out my how-to ZBrush course over on my Gumroad. And I'll throw a link to that down in the description. So we are going to be looking at the three main tools for working with geometry in ZBrush. The same tools that I use to create this character here based off of a concept by Louis Gadea. And those are going to be Sculptress Pro, Dynamesh, and Ziri Mesher. And we're gonna be talking in depth about each of those tools, when they are kind of good to bring into your workflow, what they are amazing at, and what they're maybe a little bit lacking in for each. So each one has their benefits and kind of drawbacks. But to begin here, let's go ahead and click up on our tool palette, select a Sphere 3D, and then just go ahead and click on Make Polymesh 3D. And I am going to be using my uh, Folygon clay material. And if you are brand new here, I would maybe recommend something like the basic material. And one thing that I always like to do when I start is go up into my Transform palette and activate X Symmetry. The keyboard shortcut for that is of course just the X key on your keyboard to toggle that on and off. So the first tool we are going to look at is going to be Sculptress Pro Mode, which you can find up here at the top of your screen. If you have the Move Brush selected like I do, you will not be able to activate that. So just go ahead and switch your brush now. We'll click up here on the Brush Palette, go ahead and hit C, and let's grab the Clay Buildup Brush. Now that should be clickable now, so let's just go ahead and toggle that on, and your cursor should be purple like mine. If for some reason you do not have this at the top of your screen, make sure that you are on ZBrush 2018 or later. Uh, I am going to go ahead and find out where that is. It should be in the Stroke Palette under Sculptress Pro Mode, and you can go ahead and toggle that on over there if for some reason it's not up here. we will just double click this divider to minimize that, and go ahead and do a quick, uh, quick few test strokes here. And I'll go ahead and toggle my symmetry back off for the time being. We can go ahead and stroke on our geometry here, and uh, as you can tell, I am using a pressure sensitive tablet so I can do some harder strokes, some more gentle strokes and kind of fade that out. So what is happening here with Sculptress Pro Mode? Well, if we hit Shift F on our keyboard or go ahead and come over here and click on the polyframe mode, we can see all the geometry of our sphere. And I'll just undo a couple times so that we can see what that looks like. And Control Z is undo. And of course, Control Shift Z is to redo those operations. Or you can, of course, come up here and click and drag through your undo history. So we can see the original geometry of our sphere, and we can even sculpt while we're in this polyframe mode and kind of get an idea of what exactly is happening here. So you can see as I begin sculpting here, the geometry updates kind of on the fly based on what I am sculpting on this sphere. And that is exactly what Sculptress Pro Mode does. It actually does two different things underneath the hood, but it's not really important. What is important though, is that you understand exactly how that resolution gets affected. Uh, you may see this menu pop up from time to time. If you hold the space bar, this little menu will pop up and I'm just increasing and decreasing my draw size. That is also at the top of your screen. You can see that being highlighted. So you can just click up here or you can hold the space bar. I kind of prefer the space bar because it just kind of follows my brush around wherever I have that. So we're gonna increase our draw size real big here, about the size of our sphere. And you can see how large those polygons are compared to uh, what we had before. So this time I'll decrease my draw size real small. And you know what? I'll just draw right on top of that. And you can see how much more dense those polygons are. And that is because we are making a much smaller brush stroke. And the geometry is definitely not pretty here by all means. And I think that's pretty obvious. But uh, essentially what's happening here is Sculptress Pro uh, determines its resolution based on your brush size. And you can actually change that within your stroke menu under the Sculptress Pro settings. So there are a bunch of different settings in here that you can play around with uh, to kind of affect the uh, resolution based on what we're getting here and what we want to achieve. You can also control this based on each individual brush. So say we want to use a different brush here. Let's go ahead and grab a trim brush. I personally prefer the Trim Dynamic Brush. It's an awesome little brush for kind of planing out geometry nice and quick, and you can kind of see that happening there. Uh, if we take our brush menu, see this little icon at the top left hand of the corner, we just grab that, throw it over here, and we can dock that. 
We can scroll on down into Sculptress Pro mode and we can turn off the Use Global option. And in here, we'll see the exact same settings that we have within Sculptress Pro mode in the Stroke Palette. So these are two different uh, settings. This is kind of the global setting down here in the Stroke Palette, and this is the Per Brush setting. So we are on the Trim Dynamic Brush. So if I take this Subdividing Ratio slider and decrease this down to something like, let's say 0.1, and I'll just click Enter on that, and come back over here, and start sculpting yet again. So it's about 10 times as dense because we've gone from, or it was about 1.25, so it's a little bit more than 10 times. So we're at 0.1 now. If we increase that a little bit, maybe around 0.5 or so, 0.6, that's totally fine. We can sculpt back over top of that, and it's not quite as dense. So if we switch back to our clay brush, and I'll do that here really quick, we'll go back to our clay buildup, and we continue sculpting with that. You can see based on the brush size that I'm using, that is no longer at the resolution that we're using there with the trim dynamic. So that is because we have updated that on the fly. And we can go ahead and do the same thing. We can turn off use global and set our subdivide size even higher there. And you can see it's even uh, a lower resolution than what, uh, than what we were getting prior. So there's a lot of different control that you can have with all your different brushes. I would say for the most part, you're probably fine to just stick with using the global settings. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do with this tool set, but let me go ahead and show you a couple examples. We are going to redo or undo, I guess, technically, all the way back uh, here and kind of redo our sculpture. So let's go ahead and turn on our X symmetry again. We can go ahead and close this palette. We don't need it anymore. And we are going to grab a little brush called the snake hook brush. And we can get that by pressing B, S, and it should just be H for hook. Yes, B, S, H, snake hook. Awesome. So this is very similar to a move brush if you've ever played around with this brush before or the move brush before, but the benefit here being that we can actually use Sculptress Pro Mode. So if we go ahead and grab our sphere and start moving that, and I do have symmetry on like I said, you can see how that geometry is updating on the fly. If I decrease my brush size and pull out on the geometry, much more dense, and we are getting quite a different effect than uh, what we would probably get with a move brush there. So you can kind of see the difference uh, in terms of what you would get from a smaller move brush uh, down here on the bottom versus a smaller snake hook brush. Also the added benefit of the snake hook brush being with a larger brush uh, size, it's pretty much the same as the move brush, a little bit more strong, uh, but we can also use, like I said, Sculptress Pro here. So we can maybe start uh, pulling this into the rough uh, shape of a head or you know whatever, we don't have to spend a super long time here, but as you can see, our geometry is kind of updating on the fly, and it's very nice. We don't have to worry about our geometry kind of getting in the way, and we can kind of freeform sculpt here like we were actually working with clay. And on the fly, we can also just switch to a few different brushes and continue working on this, and we don't have to, like I said, worry about geometry or anything else, because uh, ZBrush is kind of handling it all here with Sculptress Pro Mode. It's a very nice tool, uh, great for uh, kind of blocking out stuff very quickly without kind of getting tied down by the software. Software can kind of get in the way sometimes, but I think with Sculptress Pro Mode, it kind of moves all that out of the way and makes working uh, here in ZBrush just a little bit faster in that beginning area. We'll be looking at another tool called Dynamesh here in just a moment, but let's look at one more thing with Sculptress Pro here really quick. Sculptress Pro not only works with geometry, but it also works with paint. So let's click on B, S, and T. That should grab the standard brush. And we have Z add on by default. We can see that if we turn our polyframe mode back on yet again, you can see how that's updating on the fly. Essentially what we're gonna do is up here, we're gonna turn off Z add. So that is what is determining our uh, adding of geometry. So you can see it's no longer doing anything because none of these options are checked. This time we're gonna turn on RGB. And over here, let's just click on Fill Object. So that's gonna fill in our object with a white color. And let's just grab any old color here. Let's just grab a middle of the road red there and go ahead and make sure that RGB is on. And we'll turn Polyframe off and just kind of start drawing in our red paint. You can see that getting on there nice and quick. And there we go, we got some red paint. Let's turn on Polyframe again to see uh, exactly what happened there. So you can see that the resolution is actually pretty similar to what we would expect 
if we were adding geometry on top here based on our brush size. So it's very similar and that is because of the uh, settings that we have here under use global. So that's, like I said, based on your brush size, whether we are using geometry or poly paint, which is what we're using right now with RGB. So we can go ahead and use this for painting, for geometry, for anything we want. The benefit here of using this with poly paint is because poly paint, uh, kind of based on its name, right, applies paint to your model based on the resolution of your geometry. Poly paint, it's polygon paint. Technically, it is vertex color, but that doesn't really matter. What is important though, is that you can use it here for some quick painting results without worrying about resolution. All right, the next tool that we are going to look at is Dynamesh. So let's go ahead and click up here on our tool palette, grab another Sphere 3D, click up here on Make Poly Mesh 3D, and I'll just go ahead and refresh that to keep that nice and clean. Now the color of our sphere is red because that is our selected color. So let's just click and drag that back up to white and click up here to turn off Sculptress Pro Mode. All right, so now we are going to look at an awesome little tool called Dynamesh. So Dynamesh is the predecessor to Sculptress Pro. I use it quite often. It's awesome for a lot of different things, but let's go ahead and get in here and uh, talk about a few of those different tool sets. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry with the X key on our keyboard. And we are going to click and scroll down here into our tool geometry menu and open up Dynamesh. And let's just go ahead and click on Dynamesh with the default settings. And our sphere doesn't look like it changed too much, but let's go ahead and undo that and go ahead and click on polyframe mode. And now we can see the default geometry for our sphere 3D. Let's just click on Dynamesh one more time and can kind of see what's happened here. So Dynamesh, very similar to Sculptress Pro, except instead of being uh, kind of dynamic with our brush stroke, it is a toggle that we can activate whenever we want to kind of redistribute our polygons in an even manner. Now, this is not something that updates on the fly, like I said, so it is something that you have to do from time to time. So it's a little bit more restrictive in that manner, but there are a lot of uh, benefits that kind of come with using Dynamesh. So for example, let's just grab a move brush. I have that on my hotkey bar down here, but if you wanna grab that, it's just B, M, and it should just be, oh, nope, that is the uh, morph brush, B, M, B for some reason. So BMB, grab that move brush. And what we're gonna do is just pull on our geometry over here on the side really far. And I'm just gonna keep doing that and keep pulling. And you'll see our polygons getting more and more stretched through here. So stretched polygons are bad. And you might be uh, kind of wondering why that is. So Sculptress Pro kind of, like I said, makes this a lot easier. You don't have to worry about this kind of stuff as much. Let's go back to our uh, clay tubes brush. I'm actually going to swap one of my brushes down here in my hot bar for a clay buildup brush. And let's go ahead and sculpt over here on this part of the sphere where the geometry is a little more dense. Let's just go ahead and sculpt over here. And we're getting some pretty decent results based on our geometry. Let's go ahead and carry that stroke all the way over here. So I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way down my sphere and you can probably see what's going on by now. So our geometry over here has enough resolution for our brush stroke to kind of appear in a, a nice relatively clean way, as clean as you can probably get for the default clay buildup brush. But uh, as we kind of get down further down the sphere here, where our geometry is more stretched, we're starting to get that warped result. And that is because our polygons are no longer evenly distributed over here. So what we wanna do is we want to reactivate Dynamesh to make this a little bit uh, more even, a little bit more clean. So you can do that by toggling off Dynamesh and toggling it back on. That is one way that you can do it. Or the easier way, we'll just undo twice to get back to where we were. Make sure that Dynamesh is lit up, that it's toggled on. What you can do is hold the control key, click and drag in any way, and you'll pull out this little mask here and just let go of it. Make sure that it's not over top of your geometry like that. You wanna do it in an empty place on your canvas. And you can see that that re-Dynameshes your geometry. So now if I am to take that clay buildup brush yet again, see how we're getting that Pretty clear resolution all the way down now, all the way through. So we're getting a lot better results now because our geometry is more evenly distributed. 
So there's a little bit more work, right, that has to happen here with Dynamesh because it's not happening on the fly. But there are a few benefits to using Dynamesh over using Sculptress Pro. One of those benefits is that Dynamesh allows for something called a Boolean operation. And a Boolean operation is a little bit more advanced, but what we're going to do here is just press the B key on our keyboard and press I. And this will open up all of our insert multi-mesh brushes, the IMM brushes. I am looking for the IMM primitive brush. Uh, when selecting this brush, a menu should appear at the top of your screen for you. If not, hit the M key on your keyboard for multi-mesh, M, and just choose an insert sphere. And what we're going to do is just click and drag that right on top of our geometry, and you'll have that placed right there. Really quickly, what we're going to do to make this a little bit easier on us is go into our brush menu, look for the depth submenu there, and just go ahead and click and drag that down to lower our embed. All right, and I'll just undo that and we'll do it one more time. So you can see that our sphere is getting placed into our mesh there. And uh, when you use an insert multi mesh piece like this, it will mask off the other geometry. Uh, to clear that mask, we're going to do the same thing that we did with Dynamesh before. Just hold the control key, click and drag somewhere on your canvas where it's empty, and let go of it. So let's activate polyframe mode and take a look here at what's going on. So we have two pieces of geometry, and if we want to affect this piece of geometry, you know, we can sculpt on it any which way, much like this piece here. But these are two separate objects, two separate pieces of geometry. To select between these two pieces of geometry, there's quite a different uh, number of tools that we can use here, uh, but we're going to look at the basic one here, which is just holding Control and Shift. You should see a select rectangle appear up here if you're doing it correctly, and just click on your sphere. You can see that we have just our sphere object here by itself, and if we undo that, we can do the same thing on our stretch sphere uh, from earlier, and we can see that that is still uh, by itself there. So let's just undo that yet again. Essentially, what we're looking at here is two separate pieces of geometry. And like I said, Dynamesh is great at performing what is called a Boolean operation. If you don't know what that is, a Boolean is essentially a way for you to add multiple pieces of geometry together, subtract some pieces of geometry from one another, or do what's called a difference mesh, which is a little bit more of an in-between of those two. So to do what's called an additive Boolean here, we don't have to do really anything different. We just have our two pieces of geometry. We have Dynamesh on, and all we have to do is that same old Dynamesh operation by control clicking and dragging on our canvas. And you'll see that as soon as I do that, we can toggle on and off polyframe here. We have two different polygroup colors, uh, that, so we can still kind of select between those, but you'll see now that these are combined pieces of geometry. You'll see that you'll have a whole in your uh, prior stretched sphere. And now if we go back to our clay buildup brush, we can actually kind of sculpt between these pretty smoothly and maybe start using this as a piece that we combine and maybe want to kind of blend in gently through here. A lot of different uses here. Uh, very, very powerful tool. Unfortunately, you can't do Booleans on the fly with Sculptress Pro. That is where Dynamesh comes, uh, comes on top. Uh, like I said, a lot of different powerful things that you can do here. As a quick little uh, difference mesh, what's called a subtractive Boolean, we can grab our IMM primitive brush back by hitting B, I, and just selecting the IMM primitive brush here, B, I, T, and we'll press the M key on our keyboard. This time, let's grab an insert cube. And instead of clicking and dragging that on our canvas or on our sphere, we will do the uh, opposite operation, which is a subtraction. So we'll hold the Alt key, and just click and drag. And it'll look a little bit weird there, uh, but essentially we're just going to do the same thing that we did. Control click and drag, control click and drag, and you'll see that subtract the geometry from there. Now we did mess with our depth settings, so it's pushed that in a little bit further. So let's undo back to this stage here, and I'm just going to grab a move brush, make a big old draw size here, and just pull that out a little bit. And we'll try that one more time. And there we go. That's starting to uh, subtract from there nice and neatly. So a lot of power here with Dynamesh, like I said, for doing additive Booleans, subtractive Booleans. There are other ways that you can do Booleans in ZBrush with uh, some of the live Boolean features, but that's a little bit more uh, advanced than what we're looking for in this video. From here, let's move on to our final tool that we want to look at, ZRemesher. 
So let's click up here yet again, Sphere 3D. Let me change my material back, make him a Polymesh 3D, and we should be good to sculpt a quick little test there. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on symmetry here. X symmetry, the X key on your keyboard. Nice and simple. And we are again, like I said, going to look at Ziri Mesher next up. So let's say you are playing around with our good pal Dynamesh, and we are kind of working on our geometry, pushing, moving it around. It could be Dynamesh, it could be Sculptress Pro. Uh, at this point, maybe we've made a lot of additive booleans, a lot of subtractions, whatever it may be. I'll just shape this up to be a little bit more visually interesting really quick here with my move brush and just get something a little bit more maybe akin to a head or something like that. All right, so that should be fine. So at this point, uh, our geometry is probably uh, getting a little bit more stretched in certain areas. Maybe uh, the geometry is a little bit tough to work with. If we have areas where maybe we have used the snake hook and we're maybe playing around with creating some horns, you can see that the geometry is definitely getting stretched through there if we are not working with Sculptress Pro. So this is where our good pal uh, Z Remesher comes in. So we are going to go ahead and toggle off Dynamesh here. We can go ahead and minimize that and open up Z Remesher. So Z Remesher is an auto topology tool. It is something that will not necessarily give you animation ready topology. Let's just go ahead and click it with the default settings. Let that calculate while I talk, but it will give you some nice, clean, redistributed polygons. So very similar in a sense to what you could get out of Dynamesh, as you could, uh, as you can see, the polygons are nicely redistributed. But the added benefit here is that we are getting something a little bit more close to animation ready, a little bit more clean. We're getting some nice, uh, uh, we're getting some nice quads. There are some areas where the geometry is maybe a little bit more dirty than we would like. But in terms of just a quick automatic tool, Ziri Mesher is amazing. So we can continue to use something like the snake hook brush and continue to Ziri Mesh and redistribute our polygons. Very powerful tool, very quick to uh, kind of run and work with. It's awesome for organic stuff. As you can see, it's actually even better for hard surface uh, tools uh, with some of the updates. I'll throw a link to a tutorial for the new Ziri Mesher 3.0. If you guys want to learn how to work with hard surface stuff as well as some organic stuff, maybe a little bit more detailed. But the basics here is that um, when geometry is maybe getting a little bit uh, too hard to work with, maybe you're done working with Dynamesh and you want to get to something a little bit more clean and workable, now we can Z Remesh. The added benefit of working with Z Remesh topology, and I'm going to drop our target poly count down to maybe one or so, which should aim for around 1k polys. Uh, but because we have symmetry turned on, it will actually double that. So let's just click on Z Remesh. It should be around 2,000 or so, so 2,500 is pretty good. I'm liking that result. Nice and clean. We got some nice transitions going up here into the horns. Good stuff overall. Let's go ahead and sculpt on this a little bit more. Uh, and as you can see, our geometry is m very similarly to uh, Dynamesh, not really updating on the fly. But one of the awesome things that we can do with Z Remesher is start working with subdivision levels. So subdivision levels are something that you can activate at any time, but they are something that I recommend only working with uh, Z Remesher, unless you have a very specific reason for uh, kind of subdividing your mesh. Occasionally I will do it when dynameshing just to get a very specific uh, result in one specific area just so I can you know, reach that goal quickly and then re-dynamesh later, maybe at a higher resolution. But essentially what we want to do here is just go ahead and press Control D on our keyboard. And you'll see that our geometry will start to get a little bit more dense. And there is the divide button over here. Control D is the hot key for that. You should see the subdivide slider up here increase from one to two. You can click and drag between those if you want, but the hot key for that is Shift D to step down and just the D key to step back up. And then we can hit Control D again, or maybe a few times here, to continue to increase the resolution of our geometry. 
and then we can get something quite a bit more dense that we can sculpt on and continue working with from here. The main idea with working with uh, subdivision levels in ZBrush is that you only subdivide when you need that specific level of geometry. So we've probably gone up a little bit too fast here. We would probably want to handle this a little bit more uh, piecemealy here. So maybe we're starting to pull out our character's nose. However, we are doing that. I'll just kind of use the move brush. And let's say I get to a point where I say, I want to put some nostrils on this guy, but I don't have enough resolution. So let's subdivide and see if we can go ahead and put some nostrils on this. And I'll just use something like a standard brush to kind of push in there. Still a little too stretched. Let's subdivide again. There we go. We're getting a little bit closer. Maybe one more subdivide and boom. So now we're getting uh, a lot closer to the level of geometry that we can start working with using Z Remesher and using some subdivision levels in ZBrush. So a lot of power with this tool. I use uh, Z Remesher all the time. A lot of benefits to working with it. There are a couple drawbacks uh, working with subdivisions and Z Remesh topology. Like I said, it's not quite animation ready topology. It is something that is more automatic, but you can get some amazing results from it very quickly. Let's look at one way that you can get even better results from Z Remesher with a little extra work. So let's just delete lower on our geometry. So we have uh, our high resolution. Maybe we even have this dynameshed at one point. It doesn't really matter. The point here is that we want to get something a little bit more clean and the default uh, Z Remesher is not giving us the results that we want. So let's take a look at Z Remesher and see what's happening. So specifically around here in the nose, the geometry is just getting all kind of messed up and gross and it's not really exactly what I want. It's not holding that shape very well. So let's look at a little trick to make this uh, pay a little bit more attention to this area. Hold the control key to activate your masking options. Uh, by default, it should be the mask pen. We are just going to hold the control key and start drawing in here on our nose, right in our nostril. If you hold the uh, control and alt key, you can start to erase your mask. So control, mask, control, and alt, erase your mask. So let's just go ahead and paint in a quick mask around our nostril and turn on polyframe so you can see a little bit easier and press control W on your keyboard. So you can see that we get some uh, new colors in here, and these are what are called polygroups. Essentially, what we are going to do is use these polygroups to tell Ziri Mesher, hey, I want you to pay a little bit more attention to this area. So in Ziri Mesher, you see this option that says uh, keep group. So we're going to turn that on and not mess with anything else and just Ziri Mesh with the same exact settings that we had before. And because of our resolution, it's a little bit too low. So let's increase our resolution up to around two, maybe, maybe even a little bit higher. We should start to get a little bit more clean topology around this area. And now you can see that we're getting a nice clean edge loop. Some of this is a little bit more stretched than we may want, but specifically in the area that we did paint, you can see that we're getting something nice and clean. So if we were to subdivide that, it's gonna start retaining that shape a little bit more easily. So a lot of benefits, like I said, to working with Z Remesher, specifically with keep groups and uh, trying to control that a little bit more. Another area that I love to kind of paint, uh, paint some masks and work with different polygroups is around here in my eyes. So maybe we can create another polygroup in Z Remesh with keep groups again, keeping that checked and hopefully get something nice and clean like an edge loop right around that area. So that's starting to work a little bit better. Our character or whatever the heck this is, is not looking so great. But in terms of a demonstration, I think that is, uh, is looking pretty good in terms of our nice clean edge loop around our eye socket. Now we've talked about Sculptures Pro, Dynamesh, and Z Remesher. And I know it can be a lot, so I encourage you to play around with all of these tools to begin getting a feel for each. Maybe try sculpting something simple like a nose or an ear, and just try swapping back and forth between all three of these tools and you'll start to get a feel for it pretty quickly, I think. If you guys are interested in continuing to learn more about ZBrush, I will link some good Next Step videos down below, as well as my gumroad for some even higher quality curated content. Click that subscribe button if you're new around here. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.